What's up guys and welcome back to another eBay miniature rescue. Today we're going to work on this Korgorath sent in by Blake C. So Blake found this on eBay at a pretty good price and decided to send it on over for me to rescue. And I appreciate that very much Blake and I will do my absolute best to rescue this Korgorath. So what I'm going to do is look for all of the gaps, the mold lines, and anything else on this model and kind of get it prepped for the next step. I'm also going to do a bit of a head swap and a little bit of green stuff uh, sculpting to try and get something a little bit different out of this Korgorath than most of the ones that you may have seen. So first things first, I'm going to snip everything off. It's the little excess bits hanging off and then I'm going to remove the top of the headdress on this guy's head. So we're also going to need some bits. So I grabbed a couple of boxes and I went through them and I ended up with some really cool Skaven stuff that gave this guy a very interesting hairdo and mustache. So I fully admit that this is over the top in a lot of ways, but seeing that awesome head of hair that this Korgorath has and the sweet mustache, it just makes me want to know more about this model and it's going to be one of those things that you're going to see on the table and just go, what is going on with that guy? And with that, let's start doing the skin with Vallejo Dwarf Skin. So I want to keep this skin tone relatively centered on his body and kind of in some other areas that make a little bit of a sense like, you know, animal skin kind of has that inconsistency where it's really dark and then it goes to this white pigment and kind of just jumps around a little bit. So I want to try and keep it animalistic, you know, with a really dark skin. Think of, think of like a pot belly pig almost where the underside is just pink and the rest of him is hairy and black. So coming in with a bad and black, we're going to clean up some of the areas where that, that skin tone came in because shooting a light color like this through the airbrush, you know, over a dark color like black is going to create a little bit of spotting, but coming back with that black tone is going to clean that up a little bit. And it also gives an opportunity to come back with a paint color that isn't the primer and make sure that all of those black areas are a consistent black. Now with a lighter flesh color, I'm going to come in kind of on the center mass of each one of those, you know, pink areas on his body, lighten that up a little bit so that when we put a wash on it later, it has a little more variation and it's going to give a nice highlight to all of those skin toned areas.
coming in with some Zerius Purple through the airbrush. I'm going to go over a lot of the black parts really lightly with this. Keep it mostly transparent so that you can still definitely tell that it's black. But I want to blend that in with the skin tones just a little bit so that there's a, a nicer transition from the light to the dark. Jumping to a different part of the model, we're going to use Mephiston Red to fill in the hair. Rhinox Hide is a base coat for the leather loincloth and his belt. Zandri dust for his mustache cover. So now I'm going to work on the wash for the flesh, and this is going to be a little bit of a mix between Reichland Flesh Shade and Noma Oil. So for all of the skin toned areas, I'm going to concentrate with that Reichland Flesh Shade, and then I'm going to quickly clean that out while this is still wet, come back with Noma Oil, go over all of the darker parts, and try and blend those two colors together where they meet on the body. So that's a pretty effective technique for blending skin tones together like this. So now that everything's dry, we're going to come back with Mephiston Red and start filling in some of the armor panels. Cadian Flesh Tone as a base coat for his mutated hands. Oh, 
Rackarth flesh for all of the bone across the model. And the reason I'm going with this color instead of a traditional, you know, shabti bone kind of look is that a lot of the other bone colors are more yellow and they end up being kind of a brown yellow in the end. And I wanted to differentiate that from, you know, the, the mustache covers a little bit. Um, you know, I could have gone the opposite way, but I, I wanted to keep a majority of it kind of this pale white rather than, you know, kind of that yellow bone color. So now that all the Mephiston red is dry on those armor panels, we're going to come in with some Retributor armor and do all of the trim around those panels. So now that all of our general base coating is done, the skin has come quite far at this point. We're going to come back to washes and we're going to pretty much go over everything on the model with, you know, one wash or another. And this is going to bring out a lot of those details, get that wash in those recesses so that we can come back and reinforce a lot of these colors and do some pretty cool stuff a little bit later on. Reichlin Flesh Shade Gloss is going to do a lot for the gold trim on those armor panels. It's going to keep that gold pretty shiny because it's got that gloss medium in it and it's going to tint it more toward red that's going to match more of the colors that we have going on. Agrax Earthshade for all the bone on the model. Sarah from Sepia for his mustache wrap. We're going to use Nuln Oil to darken down all the red across the whole model. Drooky Violet to go over the skin tone on his mutated hands. Trigger landslides, avalanches, doesn't get much louder. Now that all the washes are dry, we're going to come back in and start to really define a lot of the details on this Korgorath. And the first thing we're going to do is fix up the metallics using Runefang steel on all of the edges. Topple, people panic, 
We're gonna start with a glaze of Mephiston Red. So we're gonna mix in a lot of water, and if you have glaze medium, then that also can work, but you can just mix it down with water, wipe off a little bit of the excess, and then start to push that pigment across those areas, and it's basically dirty paint water that's gonna go over and tint those areas to make them brighter. We want it to be kind of a subtle shift and leave a lot of that wash in those recesses. And starting with Mephiston Red, because we base coated it that color, is gonna bring that stuff back, you know, without having to do too much work. And then we're gonna work that up from there using some other colors. Something to remember when you're glazing like this, because the paint is so thin and it, it basically is just, you know, red water, you know, we're, we're trying to push the color into, in this case, on these edges, you know, it's going to take three or four different layers, and, you know, maybe even more depending on whatever color it is. So just be patient and, you know, remember that it is actually working. It might, you might not think so you know, at the time, but we're also working with the same color that the base coat is right now. So once we move to the next step, we wanna make sure that we're closer to the next color, you know, in the glazing process, so that it's an even transition rather than, you know, really stark singular color. So now coming in with Evil Sun Scarlet, it's basically Mephiston Red with a little more orange and we're gonna do the same thing that we did. We're just gonna do a few different layers over this and build that color up, you know, kind of maintaining a little bit closer line to that divider, the, the fold, I guess. And then again with Fire Dragon Bright, do the same thing, but really focusing it on those harsher edges. And that's gonna give you, you know, your really dark shadows moving into a lighter red and then a lighter red with some orange in it and then finally finishing it with an edge of orange. Something else that I should mention about glazing in general is that when the paint is wet it looks a lot brighter when you're applying it on the model and that's why you have to do several coats because it's going to dull down and blend with those other colors because you're technically tinting the color that came before it with the new color. So, as an example, this Fire Dragon Bright is really bright, but I still had to do three coats of it in order to get it to actually show up and stay. So, remember when you're glazing to just be patient, build up slowly, and you're going to get a really good result for putting in that amount of work. Now coming in with some Eschen Gray, I'm going to glaze in the highlights on a lot of the black skin. With Zarius Purple, I'm gonna do a pretty large glazed highlight around all of these little scars, especially on his back. They're pretty much just located there. There's a couple around the model, but generally on his back. And it's gonna be pretty broad over each of those scars that kind of just spills onto whichever parts of the skin. And we're gonna come back with a highlight color for those to make them stand out even more. His lead flesh over that purple on the scars is going to give us a nice bright skin tone look, you know, while having that purple surrounding it, giving a pretty nice scarred look on this dark skin. Thank you. 
Turning the model around, we're going to use corn red to fill in the giant corn symbol on his chest. With a glaze of Mephiston Red, we're pretty much going to do the same thing on this scar that we did on the armor panels. We're going to start to brighten that up and we're going to kind of push this pigment toward the center of that mark so that we can brighten it up right in the middle and start to add brighter and brighter colors, eventually ending up with a really bright white point right in the middle. I'm also going to do the exact same thing in the same order and colors for the hair. Evil Sun Scarlet is going to be the next step and we're pretty much going to localize this just in a ring around the center of that mass and just pull it toward the middle. Using this Fire Dragon Bright, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not going to localize it into the center mass as much. We're going to start on the outsides where that Evil Sun Scarlet started and paint really thin lines. And as we move towards the center, as we pull that pigment, we're going to try and make it a little bit bigger as it gets closer to the middle. With Flash Gets Yellow, we're going to do pretty much the same thing as the Fire Dragon Bright, but we're going to try and make our lines even thinner, and then really give a nice yellow punch into the center of where we want that heat to be localized. And finally, with Menoth White Highlight, I'm just going to paint in essentially a circle into that really hot spot right in the middle. I'm going to pull it out just a little bit onto where that yellow was brightest. And then lightly, I'm going to stipple up each of those lines that we painted. And not too much, but it's going to just give that kind of essence of heat emanating from each of those hot spots in the center. So before we get to the end of this video, I just wanted to say thank you, Blake, for sending this in. Your support really means a lot to me, and I hope you enjoyed this video and this model. I would also encourage everyone to just thank Blake down in the comments for sending this in and letting us enjoy this awesome Korgorath. And to everyone that voted for this model in last week's subscriber choice, thank you for commenting and participating. I hope that you enjoy this model as much as I do. And I know I said at the beginning of the video that this is just a thousand percent over the top with that luscious head of hair and those crazy mustache locks. But when you work with used models like this, it kind of opens up that creativity and you just never know what you're going to get.
so thank you again for joining me on another eBay miniature rescue. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And if you would like to send a model in to be featured on the show, then all the details are in the description below. Thank you again for joining me. I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.